Hi guys, how you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you are all having a glorious day. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with me. And today I wanted to have, well, I wanted to have a look at a few things. To start with, I uh, wanted to have a quick look at the St. Louis World's Fair, also known as the Louisiana Purchase Expo. And I was just watching a video by Phil from Tartarian Zephyr. I'll leave the link down below. So go check out his channel, subscribe to him. He's got some great videos up. Um, but what I was looking at, well, first of all, this is a picture I found um, of it, a nice big aerial photo. And I mean, look at the scale of this place. I mean, <laughs> it's built across, I can't remember the dimensions. Uh, Phil does mention it in the video, uh, but it's acres. And I was just looking at this building here. Look at this building and look at how many columns it's got here. We've got a first floor, we've clearly got a second floor and it looks like a, maybe a third or stuff on top. Now that's quite a big building. And look at this thing, like just in comparison to this. I mean, is that not ridiculous? This thing over here too. It looks like a really big building. But it's just absolutely dwarfed by things like this. And this down here, you know, just looking very low in the ground. It just That looks like just the top part of a roof. This, doesn't it? It's... And the whole place, like, it just looks, I mean, I know it's an old photo and everything, but it just sort of looks like it's been, you know, cleared recently. I don't know. And that we've still got all the shapes in the ground here. And just look at the background. Like, that looks like, uh, you know, when like the courtyards of the Vatican and sort of those old world cities in Europe where, that it really built up, you know, like France around the Louvre and things like that. It's just like, you know, the whole sort of building is encompassing it. And this is the sort of the expo part where the water is. So um, this is actually the surround. So what I was thinking when I, because uh, in Phil's video, he, he mentions that these world fairs were probably the capital cities of the old world and I think he's right and I'll show you some what have we got here some more photos I just wanted to pop this in I mean this thing is just ridiculous is it not look at the work at that look at it this is one of the buildings and this is uh, in the main sort of city area with the water <laughs> but look this is gone now, I, I believe. You know, they knocked all all this over. Same old story, you know, built for six months or whatever. I think this one cost 15 million. But is that not... I mean, look at this thing. Uh, so this dome, by the way, is called... The, it was the Festival Hall, um, obviously. <laughs> also, just look at the, how it's sitting there. This is the flat line of the first level and this is the ground level going down and as you can see it is built up and these steps go straight into the water as well uh, but I also wanted to mention another video that Phil did uh, from Tartarian Zephyr I'll leave uh, his link below this one the pioneer of renaissance uh, check that one out too he talks about uh, how there was a dome built it's actually the largest freestanding copper dome in the world if I if I'm right it's in the Vatican and the story is that the guy built it he was a watchmaker and basically uh, they just called him up said hey can you build this dome he said yeah he had no prior experience he built it and then um, there was no plans no schematics no nothing no construction pictures and he never built another dome again <laughs> and, and this was hundreds of years ago and it's still standing so these stories we get about you know architects and who built this stuff clearly just silly and this is inside the dome of the Paris exhibition and as you can see they're all the same buildings like you can imagine what this looks like on the outside um, all the same stuff 
you know, it's all the same all across these, you know, centres, these big old cities, you know, the world's fairs that we're told they were called, which we know was just a takeover of the old civilization, stealing of all the tech, all the art. You know, why do you think all these the people who want to control us, they have houses filled with all of this artwork, you know, the paintings, the statues, the vases, you know, it's all locked up in museums. I mean, look at this light. It's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is just amazing, this dome. And look at the size of it. But anyway, there we go. Let's see if we've got it down here anyway. I just found this as well. This is one of the exhibitions, and it's got a Triceratops skeleton. And what sort of caught my eye was this whale. Like that's obviously, a, you know, a model. But what's it covered in? What's it made of? Who made that back in the late 1800s? And how? You know, it looks like it's fiberglass or something. Where did this whale come from? And, and back then, I mean, I suppose, that you know, they were catching whales, so they, they knew what they looked like. But, you know, what materials was used to cover this whale? And this is, yeah, they destroyed it. This is this building. This amazing, magnificent building that they didn't build. They've taken it over and they just smashed it after, of course, stealing all the tech and telling everyone that it was theirs and all this other kind of stuff. Okay, so this photo, this photo... Uh, is, of course, the same place, the St. Louis World Fair, as they're calling it. And look at the shapes that, that, that are radiating out from this central um, you know, hub, central sort of city place. And this is where all the water is, you know. And, and these, you know, you see this in every World's Fair, this sort of central place. It's squared off, it's around water, and we have these big, long, uh, what are these, promenades or whatever they're called. And these all always have... You know, like the keys, you know, the geomancy sort of patterns in the ground, the keys and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know, this it's looking pretty star forty to me, to tell you the truth. You can see this back wall around here. Okay, comes up down to the water. And just see how it sort of radiates out from the centre. Obviously different buildings and looking different, but you know, could these big dome buildings, you know, like this thing have the same kind of function as cathedrals because they are pretty similar you know in construction and in, in the sort of way they look and you know portal windows and domes and antiquity bits on the top but anyway yes yeah, it looks like looking star 40 so this is you know if if these are all the capital cities of the old world which i believe they are uh, all these world fair sites you know, they look to be built on the same kind of principles that the star forts and star cities are built on. And, and you know, are these the centres? Is Was there a, a massive star city around this? And this is sort of the energy centre. Uh, so this is a shot, yeah, of the same. So this is that sort of the squared off, you know, with the water. And you see these everywhere on all these world's fairs. So this is Paris. Same kind of thing. See how it's all squared off around this sort of center, you know, city square. And there's always like this water and promenades and things. Always the same kind of buildings. You know, here on water all the time. Uh, here's some more. This is, uh, was that the California one? I can't remember. <laughs> but same kind of thing. Big water, big dome at the end. There's always lots of big statues. And this is Angkor Wat in Cambodia. And you can see here, the same kind of design. We've got these big walkways. Huge. I mean, look at the size of this construction. And, you know, very similar. A big walled in square like it, it is very similar in Europe it's just obviously the um you know the facade is is quite different uh, this is a bit of Cambodia but here we go so look at I mean look at that 
it's, it's walled in a rectangle. Then we have the, the middle wall. And then we have the center where all the temples and the antiquity stuff is. You know, very similar to, you know, where you see uh, the old star cities and they have cathedrals in the middle and things like this. This looks a bit more, I don't know, advanced maybe, a bit more machinery. It doesn't really look like a place for people to live, this center bit. But then obviously around, you know, is, is where the, you know, if you think of this as like the citadel of a star fort is, is I think what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, but also when you look at the castles in England, they set out this, this same kind of way. And look at the shape of these, you know, these, um, spires. Is that what we're going to call them? You know, they just stylize differently to the domes that we see everywhere else, but they are pretty much domes. They just, if you have a look at them, they just stylize differently. And see how they're all leveled as well. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine levels by the looks of it. I don't know if these are the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. Which is interesting if that's right. Seven, 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 and nine. Nine is obviously the god number. Um, well, that's what I call it. It's just basically uh, nine always equals itself. You know, it's divisible by itself. You know, um, I won't go into it now, but I have in previous videos. And so that'd be the center sort of, you know, the, the god number. And these are sevens. Now we have seven chakras. There's seven. Uh, you know, planets or wandering stars, seven days of the week. So seven is a significant number as well. These look like they might have been smashed up a bit, but I'm not sure how big they were. But it's it's just, it's all the same thing, isn't it? Um, and, and this is in Cambodia. But, you know, it's not, not very, not all that dissimilar to the outlay um, of the centers of the world's fairs. We don't know how much of that is buried, of course. And this is just an aerial shot. Uh, this is what we were looking at in the center. And as you can see, completely surrounded by a moat. I mean, so this is, you know, imagine a castle in, in Europe or England with a moat around it. You know, it's all similar designs, you know, and there's, they always seem to have these bridges or, um, that, you know, come in and they're always centered. Sometimes you have four, sometimes one, sometimes two. But they're always laid out in a certain way, which of course we don't do anymore. So this is all to do with earth energies and, and harmonizing things. And, and, you know, I think we all know that they had it going on back then. And, you know, and everything was sort of set up. It was made to last free energy, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, it kind of seems to have been destroyed. So here's another shot of Angkor Wat. And uh, basically Wat means city. I mean, sorry, Angkor means city. Uh, it's a Khmer word. And Khmer was the ancient culture, you know, that built all these. Not associated with the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot, who basically took over the name and killed most of his countrymen. Uh, but this you can see, basically these were, you know, they were lost and rediscovered. You can see Angkor Wat especially this is an older photo. It's just got trees growing through everywhere and they're scared now to cut them down because uh, it's basically compromised the structure of the buildings and the trees are holding up a lot of what's left there. But you can see built right up off the ground, covered in, you know, plants. Looks like something's happened. You know, and why did, why did everyone leave these places? If they work so well, you know, we're told that they just sort of ran down, but... They were probably chased out. Here's another shot, another old shot. Now they're saying this is 1100 years old around about, but it looks pretty ancient really, doesn't it? And just similar things, you know, to all over the world, just this, looking at this little wall, you know, it just has the same features that we see everywhere in, you know, so-called Greek and Roman kind of architecture. These at the back have clearly been smashed 
You know, it looks like, a, you know, something's going on here. I've got mud piled up. Ah, this is just a nice old drawing. Uh, this looks like it was when it was in use. And you can see these, you know, look like basically pagodas that are a bit more rounded off. So in, you know, we, we have these different styles in Asia and, you know, from Europe and uh, well, Asia really, I mean, they do have the old world buildings too, but they have all these pagodas and these domes and bits and pieces everywhere, quite different. You know, we don't normally find that style in the West. This is another old shot. Pretty bad one, that one. Uh, so this is some of the temple work. And this, see these things? Very, very similar to prayer wheels that you find in the Buddhist culture and up in Tibet and places like that. But uh, this is down in Southeast Asia in Bangladesh in the tropics. Same, you know, it's all the same, guys. It's all the same. And this, again, just looks like the top of something, doesn't it? it it's, it's a bit weird to just be... I mean, I don't know what it was built for. And you can start to see on this one uh, the construction. See, this is all brickwork. Brickwork here. This is all... I mean, you can see there's different bricks, you know, different stones in there, bricks. And see how there's cuts here in this artwork? So it looks like this artwork has been put on later because you wouldn't you know build the wall in sections like this and then go back and, and carve this artwork to put on it so just have a look yeah that construction because when you look at this it, it all looks like it's been here see these lines see that and there so these are blocks that have been put on and it would make sense that they were, you know, all the artwork was put on before and then they were put together and stacked up and held together because these are clearly different blocks. You can see the lines everywhere and all stacked up perfectly. I mean, look at these lines here. You know, it is the artwork lines up perfectly, but it's all just like, you know, built in blocks and stacked on like a big Lego kit. And you can even see see the lines there where it's cut. Cut there. So what was going on? How did they create, you know, how were they building and how did they create all this stuff? This is just an old shot just to show how derelict it, it is. You know, because people would just leave a place like this, right? These, uh, this is from uh, around, you know, circa 1900. And these hats, see these hats? They're just very similar to the, you know, the pagodas, aren't they? To the, the, the big sort of temple spires that we see, the big towers. Very similar, and they're wearing them on their heads, which is interesting. So, I mean, where does this is obviously just uh, you know artwork imitating something? But I mean, what were they originally? Because a pretty funky design, isn't it? Very antiquity looking. And I found this as well, and as you can see, these statues here. Are wearing the same hats and see the uh, the faces and in this one these guys are wearing those masks uh, this is the hall of audience palace it says in bangkok another spy there like um, you know similar to this and and look and it's almost mirroring that isn't it big you know antique stuff everywhere and even the the big the triangle so even though that's really stylized it's basically the same as, you know, the, the Greco-Roman portico things that we see everywhere. But I found that interesting. You know, what's going on with these hats and these spires? What's the link there? 
some kind of crown. And here's some more pictures to show you what I was talking about, this Lego construction. I mean, look at this, cut right through the middle of his face. But you can see that, I mean, even though there's a gap there now, that, that would have joined up perfectly. And it looks like it's been hit by a, an earthquake or something. See, all the, like, like it's had a big, like a sudden shake, and it's all, all sort of moved apart a little bit. But not that much, you know. Look at this legs, cut right through the legs. Right through the middle of all these people. So it's like they didn't even sort of care where the cuts were. I mean, look at this right through the middle of his face. So they could obviously line it up well enough that you wouldn't even notice the gap, which, which we see in block work everywhere. So they were working to some kind of, I don't know, dimensions for these blocks maybe or something. But, you know, look, look at this. Just cut his arm off straight through his hand, straight through his belly. So, and the thing is, this would have all had to be done, you know, sort of worked out, you know, the whole picture and everything and pre, you know, I doubt that they would have carved it and then cut it and then re put it back together. So we're talking about blocks that would have had to be done individually, but it would have had to, you know, match up perfectly with all the other blocks. How did they do that? Again, look at these blocks. Right through the middle, you know, just... I mean, this is obviously because that's the construction, right? But you can see there's just cuts everywhere. I mean, and look at this. This all even looks off-centered, this. See this? You can see this line's higher, and we've got this little, no uh, you know, notch, which... You see a lot in the ancient, you know, stonework, these sort of little funny notches everywhere. It's just interesting that it's not lined, you know, it's like one, two, three, one, two, and that's sort of off center, but then one, two again, one, two, and see how that's off centered, off centered, and that goes back, and then three at the top. Interesting construction, and th you know, this in the background too, you can see it's exactly the same all the way up and down, all just like, like literally, it's like Lego. So look at this whole, this whole relief is just cut into little bits. Straight, you know, they don't care where the cuts are. Look straight through the elephant's eye. And just clearly made up of, you know, what looks like prefabricated blocks. And they seem to be like full, but it doesn't seem to be like a like a sort of facade that they've just sort of whacked on. Uh, one, because, you know, they're still there, they're stuck so well. But two, they do look like, you know, thick blocks. You can see the gaps in there. This one again. Look at that cut right through the middle there. And you can see, you know, it's just all done to line up perfectly, even the tails right through the belly of this lady. And they've all got the hats on again as well. This guy's even got earrings that look similar, but upside down. Very interesting. And this, even this shape, that's like a stylized shape of what you see. Uh, in the cathedral windows, they have these are either normally got three or four sort of, you know, circles joined together, which as well, you know, you could look at that as um, the seed of life or like sometimes called the germ of life, which is just the first stage of the flower of life, just four circles. Interesting stuff. This is also uh, in Angkor Wat. This has been, this was sort of came out 10 years ago or something. And uh, it looks like a stegosaurus, right? Or, yeah, it could have a little horn, but yeah, it looks like a stegosaurus. Interesting that we saw a stegosaurus uh, earlier in the World's Fair building. So, I, I, you know, what do you make of that? And here we go again, cut straight through there. And you can see how well this, you know, how well they were joined originally. 
And this has obviously been worn away. It looks pretty old. It's had weather wearing to it. But pretty good. Pretty good lineup. This is Aztec, and it's exactly the same construction. So it's just block work. And again, just lining up perfectly. Look at that line there. Across here. Look at that. Obviously, it's had a bit of wear and tear, but you can see that, you know, that's, that would have been perfect. You know, and that would not be easy to do. And like I said, what was the construction like? They obviously drew it out, you know, drew it out first. But then how are they doing this? Is this some kind of, I don't know, um, some kind of mold or, you know, like some kind of mold that they press into things? Or is it some kind of machine cutting? Because really, to get everything to line up so perfectly, we're not talking about dudes sitting around with hammers and chisels. I mean, we know that anyway, but... You know, it's like it was a full... You know, like you put this whole sort of picture into a machine, and it just goes, okay, and you put line up all the blocks underneath it, and it just goes across the top and goes... Zit, 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 and then you take them and you stack them up. I don't know. Pretty spun out like here again this i believe is in india uh, this looking kind of buddhisty but i think this this is a temple in india and you do see this again this construction in india block work but it's just all but all this art and all these statues you know this facade on it and they link up again perfectly And in this picture, you can see we've got this bit here. You know, clearly this is all block construction. I mean, it's clear as day. You can see there's a bit fallen out there, but you, know, you can see it all the lines across the face here. But this bit has been, you know, the front's been taken off and it looks like they're open inside. But clearly, look at this block construction. And these are just lined up on top of each other. You know, there's no you know, crisscross pattern of, you know, two, one, two, one. And they're all stacked up. And even though the front's been ripped off, it's just sitting there. It looks as strong as. No problems. Big stone lintels down here. Clearly it's been weathered. It looks like it had, you know, like all this stuff it looks like it's been weathered off. Looks like it used to be a lot more intricate, but... But it looks very old. So this block work, they're just stacking it up somehow. I mean, look at this top bit here. It's all just falling away. and You can just see the construction. How is it standing together, though? Again, these faces. I mean, this is just clearly block construction. And down here you can see... I don't know, it looks like something's been taken out or broken down and it's sort of crumbled a bit, but it's hasn't, you know, this is at the base of this big structure and it's not compromised the, um, you know, the structural integrity at all. It's just still standing there. And these are big. Again, this, you know, you can just see the, the construction work here. It's all stone. And it almost done like a brick wall, you know, sort of one wall and then another one up against it and against it and against it. So but that other one we saw looked hollow. So these, you know, these are obviously quite dilapidated and worn down. What is all this stuff? Obviously techy. And, you know, the same thing. You know, this is very common, you know, doors, three or more in a row with columns in between them. You see that everywhere. You can see that, you know, it was even paved with big rocks. You know, this is all just block construction.
This is another one. This is back in Bangladesh. It's not uh, Angkor Wat. I think it might be Tom Wat. Uh, so, you know, very similar construction. And you, you see a lot of this in Thailand too with uh, the Buddhist kind of, uh, with the 72 um, Dolma sort of things. This, uh, the, the, and they've all got a monk like statue inside them. Very similar design. But this you can see, it's just been smashed. All the tops have gone down. We're told this is, you know, 11, 1200 years old, but it looks pretty worn down. You know, and if, if that's not weathering, then someone's gone in here and they've taken this construction apart. Are they pillars up there? Uh, because you can see it looks like the blocks have just been taken out, of taken off the facade. It's almost like what you see in, uh, you know, in the city, the old world buildings in the city that they reface, basically, and they go through and they take all the domes off and they take all the antiquitec off and they give it a new look. This is the same kind of thing, you know, they've taken off all the, the antiqui antiquitechiness, haven't they? But the structure seems to be intact. Nice big face there. That, and, you know, this, look at this big face carved in, it looks pretty good. It's not worn down by the weather. Is it? So what's going on there? Can you see that? Good eyes, good night, you know, it's looking nowhere, you know. These look smashed. This is uh, a pyramid temple in Bangladesh called Kokur, Kokur Pyramid Temple. And again, you can see this is block construction. Something's happened here, you know, the wall's been smashed out of it. But these are the steps to get to the top of the pyramid. And as you can see, someone's come in and ripped them all out. And so they've had to come back, you know, to get up to the top now, they've had to put this big ladder on. So all this, these were steps. You can see these were steps all the way up. And someone's come along and purposely just taken the steps. The rest of it's all here. So it's not like they were going after the stone. And there are shots when you look around, the stone's just all around the place. So someone's come in and destroyed this temple on purpose, stopping people to get to the top. On the top, there's a lingam. Uh, well, there was. It's broken now. Which, uh, you know, they look pretty antiquitechy. Not, we're not really sure what their purpose is, but they're everywhere throughout India and a lot of, you know, sort of Asia. But yeah, so someone's come in and stopped people getting to the top of this temple. This is it. This is the pyramid. And you can see this is the stairway. It's just been ripped out. And you can see these are pretty tall walls. You know, it's like a sheer wall across another. So it's pretty hard to scale when you have no steps. And again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. So the top being the crown chakra. And, you know, again, it's just a... It's a pyramid, but it's very dilapidated, you know, but, you know, and this is what we're told, oh, they're just sort of worn down. But clearly these, these structures look like someone's gone in there purposely and ripped them apart so they can't be used, you know, decommissioned them. And why would you do that if it's, if it's just a structure that's, you know, a temple to pray to a god or whatever? Obviously they're machines and someone's gone in and shut them down, turned the grid off. And I think we all know who these people are. And they're still very out there today trying to shut down, you know, our heritage and destroy it and enforce their will upon us. Now, this is a video by Praveen Mohan. Uh, if you haven't seen Praveen's channel, it's really good. He gets out and shows heaps and heaps of really cool stuff. I'll leave the link to this below. So check it out. This is some video of him actually in that Koko temple. And see this. He starts to talk about this. This is, um, you know, obviously a hole that's been carved in rock. 
and he, he looks around and what he shows is that these blocks, uh, this is the temple, are actually joined together. And see again, this, this is all the blocks, all the stairs that have been smashed out. Someone's ripped them out and just thrown them all over the ground. See, that was where the stairs were. And they've just literally just ripped it apart. But what I wanted to show you, yeah, the government's had to build new stairs up the outside. So here's just some more footage. And what he shows in this is uh, those holes, that hole I showed you. If you look at the bricks, it's actually a way that, that they lock together because he was looking at this where there's these two pillars with this big lintel. This has fallen away, but this lintel's standing there, no worries. And you can see, obviously, it's got this big weight hanging off there, and it's how is that standing up? And yeah, he compares it, you know, that it's a similar look to Stonehenge, and obviously we see that everywhere, that sort of pillar lintel construction. And he shows here, so see these holes that have been carved? And look at that. So can you see, this is on the bottom of the pillars. And this is a part of the pillar, but it's got this square peg. And on the ground where they sit in, or onto this piece of stone that they sit into, obviously these fit into here. So they're locked together. They've got this locking system. And what it reminded me of was uh, the ruins in South America, like Puma Punku. And you see that the the construction, like the block construction, they're actually joined by metal uh, staples, they call them. Uh, so you'd have like a bit here, a channel, and then you'd have your other bit of rock with a channel. And they would pour what looks like that. It looks like they, they would pour molten metal into it, and it would then set and hold them together. Uh, because all the staples are different, so how else would you make, you know, they look like they've been poured by molten metal. So I found that very interesting because this is why we see, you know, a lot of that old construction, it's all smashed and there's big gaps, but it, it's still structurally sound. It's not forming apart because it's actually all linked together. A bit like Lego. So is this, you know, this is how they get everything to lock together so tightly so that we get all those uh, statues and things looking perfect. You can see here again. And again, how do you carve this hole out? You know, clearly, you know, we all know, clearly they're not chisels and things. And he actually goes into, um, yeah, how it looks like Lego. The way that they click together. And this temple, uh, he says, well, <laughs> there's a couple of cool things. One is it was supposed to be built in 12 hours. That's the legend that it sprang up in 12 hours. Uh, and then someone has come along and... Uh, you know, from an opposing religion and smashed everything down and decommissioned it basically. But yeah, it's a very interesting video. And like I said, he does really good work. So check out his channel. I'll leave a couple of links below because uh, he actually gets out there and has a look, you know, shows you exactly what it all is. Gets into some good, good stuff actually. And this he was showing, see how there's no join. So this is one piece of stone. See that? No join. So, so from this top bit here, that's one slab of stone that's been carved out like this. And then obviously you can see the little tiles that someone's tried to put there. Um, and these are, you know, obviously very, very old and they're still, you know, they've, some of them lost the, the edge a bit. Looks like they had a covering on them. Uh, and up again here, there's another big stone carved into steps. So these are massive slabs of stone. So it's all very interesting. How did they construct all this? How did they carve it all? Are we talking, you know, like big machines that were pre-programmed and, and were then sort of cutting, cutting the stone out like we see today? You know, they've got machines that, you know, you put a program in and they, they'll just go and cut it out in metal or whatever. Is it that kind of technology or... I mean, it could, can you print stone? Who knows? Could you make up some kind of slurry that could print, 
print this stuff, like the artwork. Because some of that artwork and the way it lines up is ridiculous. You can even see here the lines across. You know, that's not even one bit of stone there by the looks of it. So it's very, very interesting stuff. And here's a bit of a look at uh, Puma Punku. And same kind of thing with these H-blocks. You can see, you know, they're, they're carved and made to fit into each other. You can see here how they lock in with this center bit, and you get these lines. So that they, you know, this, and that's why we get, you know, it's mortarless construction, isn't it? Because they don't need the mortar; it's all locked together by the stone, the stone, and and staples by the looks of it. Uh, hold it all together. So down here we can see the staples. Uh, it's a pretty small picture. Um, this is a drawing. You can see it's split there and the staples were in there holding it together. Uh, let's see if we can get a better picture. So Puma Punku, H-blocks everywhere. Like all this internal carving with 90 degree angles. <laughs> You know, that, that, that on itself just tells you that the story we're being told, his story, is absolute crap. There's no way you can do that. These internal angles at 90 degrees, sharp, you know, with bloody chisels and hammers and stuff. Copper, brass, it's silliness. I just see... And here's just another shot as well, just to show you that construction. This is in South America now, Tiwanaku, I think this is. And you can see clearly block construction everywhere, just all lined up on top of each other. And this, this is the one with the funny heads and faces all across it. And of course, a lot of the statues and the, you know, representations of gods that we see in South America very similar to Easter Island, the Maui. Something else found at Pumapunku. Thousands of thousands of years old. South America, and of course this is all over India. You know, did they just both come up with that same design, just randomly, and decide to, you know, put it all over their cultures? And here you can see the staples I was talking about. So these all the staples have gone, but you can see they've been they cut out these grooves, line them up, and then pour liquid metal in them, and it just locks the stones together. So all this construction, it's it's all slightly different, but it's all kind of the same. All the layouts, and here again, look at this, Puma Punku, you can see the same kind of layout that we were just looking at. In Southeast Asia, different continent, but look, square, different levels, center bit. Interesting, and they actually say that the Puma Punku used to be a dock, that there used to be water up there. They reckon it was an old dock, that there was a big lake. And of course, the stonework we see everywhere, and it's exactly the same, would, would be locked in the, uh, together with either these staples or the the sort of pegs and holes that we saw. And these just don't have uh, the statues on them. That's the only difference between this and what we saw in the Angkor cities in Cambodia. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a bit of a walk around, having a bit of a look at construction and how it all really, it's all the same, it's all tied together, it's all comes from the same kind of philosophy and the same knowledge, and obviously they were all using the same technology for the same you know, outcome, the same benefits, which were to keep a harmonious world where everyone was looked after, you know, because unless, you know, uh, as Bruce Springsteen says, I think it's attributed to him, Unless everyone wins, no one wins, and it's so true. You know, if, if, if there's people out there that aren't winning, they're going to be doing the stuff that makes society worse for everyone else. So it makes sense, whichever way you look at it, it makes sense to look after everyone and make sure that everyone's got, you know, a, a, the best standard of life they can possibly have and all the freedom of, 
of uh, choice and thought that they can have because that's how we grow and we move forward like, like these ancient cultures obviously did and quite obviously they were working together you know they weren't warring they were working together and obviously they they made some kind of grid they were tapping into the energy and they had it set up and someone's come along and willfully destroyed it and these people are still trying to willfully destroy our heritage, our culture, our belief systems, our values, our morals, and ultimately our future. But we will win because we are onto them and they have lost because they are pathetic. And they've been going at this for thousands of years and they haven't broken us yet. And this last uh, stint that they're trying has, has <laughs> it's, it's already blown up in their face. The world's onto them, so should be a very exciting and interesting next few weeks. All right, thanks for spending some time with me, guys. I hope you have a joyous day, and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.